Hello Church at Five. Before I start talking about Psalm 103, I'd like to share with you a short background of the Psalms. The Book of Psalms is a compilation of several ancient collections of Hebrew songs and poetry for use in congregational worship as well as in private devotion. The New Testament apostles frequently used references from the Book of Psalms as texts for teaching Christian doctrine. The forgiveness of sins by grace, the faithfulness of God, the sinfulness of all men, including Jew and Gentile, the inclusion of Gentiles in the church, the existence of angels, and the appropriate conduct of saints are all doctrines reinforced by quotations from the Psalms. Also throughout the centuries, the Psalms have been a source of personal inspiration and spiritual strength. In the course of dealing with the adversities of life, people are often frustrated by, the, by not being able to express adequately their emotional pain or mental anguish. The Psalms release us from that frustration with emotionally drenched complaints, humble confessions, desperate pleas, penitent prayers, or screams of pain. The writers of the Psalms skillfully expose and express the yearnings of our deepest thoughts. The use of the Psalms is often the first step toward our deliverance. By song and spirit, they comfort the lonely, strengthen the weary, bind the brokenhearted, and turn the eyes of the downcast up toward God, their Creator. Hope returns, faith is renewed, and life again becomes bearable. Now, talking about Psalm 103, David knew what it was to suffer opposition and felt hemmed in by his enemies. He could feel oppressed and discouraged, but he learned the effectiveness of praise. In Psalm 103, he speaks to his own soul as if to say to himself, take your eyes off your problems, David, and remember all that God has done for you. The salvation, the healing, and the deliverance that is yours through his love and mercy. He gives himself five good reasons for praising the Lord. One, he forgives all my sins. Two, he heals all my diseases. Three, he redeems my life from the pit. Four, he crowns me with love and compassion. Five, he satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. See how many aspects of salvation are included in those verses, few verses. And this was centuries before the coming of Jesus. Through him, God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Praising God for your salvation is the antidote to fear. In the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Let me encourage you with this verse. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Do not harden your hearts if you hear his voice. Jesus says to you personally that he is your salvation. The church is not your salvation. Your spiritual life is not your salvation. Your good works is not your salvation. Jesus is your salvation. Trust in him. Let us pray. I like to use Lamentations 3, 21 to 25 as a source of our prayers. Yet, this I have called to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. 
Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope is in him, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen.